today for the Community Legal Aid Services PICA with Payroll ADP Integration Project. Um, on the phone with us today is Stephen McGarity, Associate Director at CLASS. Steve? Hello. And myself, Cynthia Vaughn, the Statewide Technology Project Manager at OLAF. All right, so the purpose and the product of this particular project, um, it's a collaborative project between Legal Aid of Western Ohio, Legal Aid Society of Cleveland, and CLASS. And the um, project is to integrate PICA case management with timekeeping and payroll systems. The product itself will be a paperless digital integrated system uh, that from the point of staff entry of time records into PICA, and it goes all the way through to delivering the payroll data to a third party payroll company, in this case, it's ADP. Um, the resources that we've used for this project include Steve from class, Jeff Caput from class, Tom Vidal from Pro Seniors, Ty Acker here at the Ohio Legal Assistance Foundation, and myself for technology project management. To give you an idea of the budget and time frame and the PM piece, uh, the budget for the project was 36000 and some change. The project time period was originally a year, but then was modified due to some changes that occurred uh, regarding TIG administrative compliance, and that happened in early 2011. Um, class contracted with OLAF for technology-only project management, as well as some um, extensive programming actually from TIACR. But for project management, we have utilized Basecamp for collaboration during the project. Uh, we used a waterfall phased approach, which many of you know from TIG projects, they're phased out and you've uh, put um, estimates of time in your budget for those phases. We used the same kind of approach. And we used PICA and Excel for timekeeping and budget control. And what we did was for programs that are LSC funded and they're using PICA, we set up um, crystal reports that would automatically generate their time into nice reports and then we take those reports them into Excel and we can um, in real time continuously monitor our budget. Moving on here. In terms of requirements, this was quite an extensive uh, project. So when we had to make sure that we had all of the requirements defined, we used a variety of tools including Excel, um, listing out requirements as you can see as an example here and what the different programs wanted in terms of their requirements. Uh, in terms of deliverables, since there were many, we used what's called a work breakdown structure. And some of you may have been at TIG and heard me speak about the use of a WBS in a project. It is a um, organization style of deliverables based on the components of the project or phases. So for example, we have requirements, code tests, ADP, crystal reports, et cetera. Within the boxes here, these are the specific deliverables. They're not the activities, but they are the specific deliverables for each part of the project. And when you have it on one page, it makes it easier for uh, team partners to understand who is doing what and what they're responsible for. Now, from this point, um, I'm going to hand it over to Steve to step through an actual demo so you can see what this project looks like. Steve, I'm going to give you presenter status. Okay. And there you go. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, um, I'll sort of walk through the whole process and sort of give some background. Um, this concept that we have got started a couple years ago with um, Legal Aid of Western Ohio and their um, sister organization, ABLE, out of Toledo, who wanted to do a paperless timekeeping system. So they worked to develop a system where they staff input time and um, submitted to their supervisors and managers, approved it, and it was all done paperless. So we really liked it, and so we basically copied their system. Um, as it turned out, as we used it more and more at both LAO and at Community Legal Aid, um, the concept of garbage in, garbage out really applies in this case. Um, so we found a lot of circumstances where people were putting in um, bad information into timekeeping records that was causing a lot of grief 
uh, for finance because when they went to process payroll, they were looking at data that didn't make any sense. So the first place we started was sort of cleaning up the data input process, um, which, which I'll sort of walk through right now. So <clears throat> um, we're using PICA, obviously, as you can see from my screen. Um, so the first thing that we did uh, to try to stop people from putting in bad data was looking at um, this is this this is for community legal aid and Lao has their own rules in place and so they have their own custom settings to stop bad information from pe being put in. So I'm logged in as a as a, a fake user right now into our database system, so you can see how this works. But um, if I am a member of our union that works here. Um, our collective bargaining agreement has minimum increments that you're allowed to take for certain kinds of leave. So for example, if you want to take vacation, you have to take at least three hours of vacation leave at any time. So it used to be that people would just put in two hours of, of vacation and their managers would sort of blindly approve it and then finance would get it and then have to go back and clean all that up. So now we're stopping people from doing that with, with a simple um, <clears throat> simple pop-up. So if they put in two hours of leave um, and then uh, all the leave codes are at the bottom here. So if I try to save this, it'll come up with a warning message that says that uh, the collective bargaining agreement requires a minimum of three hours. So again, it's impossible for them now to record a minimum of three hours, which this, this feature alone saves finance hours of time trying to clean up. So the other, the only other one, we have a personal leave minimum requirement of one hour, so if they try to put in less than an hour, it'll come up with the same kind of message. Uh, if um, the other problem we were running into was people putting in time records for periods that had already been approved in the past. So for example, um, a, an attorney um, or a legal assistant is talking to a client and they realize that they forgot to put a case note in three weeks ago and they want to associate a quarter of an hour with that time record, that time has already been approved by their supervisor and has been submitted to finance and the person has been paid based upon the total hours already submitted, which in most cases is going to equal their, their normal work week. So if we let them put in time in the past, it looks like they work more than their normal work week, and we're supposed to pay them if they work more than the normal work week, the additional money. So in order to stop people from putting in time records um, in periods in the past, we um, have put in, so let me see if I can put in a time record for this week. So if I try it, it'll say this pay period is locked due to a pending or already approved timesheets. So again, it just will stop them. So if they need to add time in a previous time uh, period, then they actually have to go back to the supervisor and get the, the pay period unlocked so that they can put it in. And we'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, another thing we have here at Community Legal Aid is for hourly employees, we want to know when they start and end their day. And if they come and go during the day for like lunch break, uh, which is unpaid here, we, we want to know th their total time for the day, regardless of the actual time slips. Um, we, we do both, but we also want to just know when they got here and when they left. So we have an in-out time record that they um, have to complete. So if you are an hourly person, you put in, um, <clears throat> If they started at 8.30 a.m. and they left at noon, then they would enter that, and then they would have a, a second entry for the afternoon. Um, and if, if they had taken a long lunch, then their in time would be later. Um, and then their out time, if they left at the same time, their out time would stay the same, and then they would make up the day with other kind of leave or whatever. 